basic science class. I am Ejiro Eferi. Today, we shall be looking at a very interesting topic, which is family traits. This topic is gotten from the theme, learning about our environment. Part of what we shall be learning in today's class are dominant traits and recessive traits. I would encourage you to keep a mirror by your side because in course of this class, you may want to look at yourself and see some of these traits in yourself. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify some of these family traits that run in your own family. You should also be able to differentiate between dominant traits and recessive traits. And lastly, you should be able to explain how these traits are inherited from parents. So let's begin. Have you ever wondered why you look so much like your mom or like your dad? Or maybe like your grandparents, say your grandmom or granddad? Or do people tell you you look like one of your grandparents? Maybe your grandmom from your mom's side or from your dad's side? Or your granddad from your mom or dad's side? How about your siblings? Do you look alike? Do your siblings look like your parents? Or do you look like your uncle or your auntie? Well, it is normal for members of a family to look like one another. So members of a family share certain resemblance. For example, in my own family, I look like my dad. I am tall, my siblings are tall. I am dark, my siblings are dark as well. My mom and dad are tall and dark. I look like my dad. The shape of my face is like that of my dad. But I have other siblings. My sisters, for example, they look like my mom. And some of my brothers also look like my dad. So you can see, in my family, we have certain characteristics that are shared between my parents and we, the children. So every family has certain characteristics that are shared between parents and children. So that is probably why you should look like your mom or your dad, or you should look like your grandparents or your uncle or auntie. These various characteristics that are shared between parents and children are often inherited from parents. We inherit some of these characteristics from our parents. For example, I said I look like my dad. I am as tall as my dad. I inherited that trait or that characteristics of tallness from my dad. So some of these traits may be physical. In the case of the height, you can see I am tall. Don't I look tall? How about you? Are you tall? I'm also dark in complexion. You can see the complexion of my skin. I am not fair. Are you fair or dark? What's the complexion of your skin? Are your parents fair or dark? So you can see some of these traits with your physical eyes. That's why we say they are in physical form. Some of them are in physical forms. Examples of traits you can see with your eyes that are in physical forms are traits such as the color of one's skin, like the color of my skin, the color of your skin, the complexion of your skin. One could be dark or fair. You can also see the shape of a person's face, like the shape of my face. What's the shape of your face? You can see all of these features. You can see the height of a person. You can tell if a person is short or if a person is tall. Some of these characteristics could also be in forms that we cannot see with our eyes. There are certain characters or certain attributes that are present in a person that they often inherit from their parents. Examples of such characteristics that cannot be seen with the eyes but are inherited from parents are the way a person speaks. Sometimes we speak like our mom. You find people or children that talk like their dad, or they talk like their grandmom, their granddad, or they speak like their, their aunties or their uncles. So this is an example of a characteristic that is inherited, but you cannot see it physically, except the person displays it. Another example is how angry a person can be. Sometimes you hear people say, this child gets so angry like his dad. Or this girl gets so, so angry like her mom. Or this boy or this young boy can get so aggressive like his mom or uncle 
or auntie. These are all characteristics we inherit from our parents. When we take a look at a family, for example, if you take a look at your own family, you can easily identify some of these characteristics that are shared between your parents and the children in your home. Let's take a look at this families represented here. Can you see any characteristic that has been shared? Do they look so tall? How about this other family? I think these members of this family are all tall and they are not so dark in complexion. They are a bit light in complexion. In this case, you can see that the baby and her mother look so much alike. So you can see family members share different characteristics. In this other family, we can see that they have similar hair color except for the dad who has a darker hair color. What then is family trait? What are family traits? What are these traits all about? Family traits are those characteristics that are passed on from parents to the children in a family. Let's go back to my family. I said earlier that in my family, we are tall. I am tall. My siblings are also tall. My parents are tall as well. My mom is tall and my dad is tall. My grandparents from my mom's side, that's my grandmom and my granddad from my mom's side, they are both tall. My grandparents from my dad's side, my granddad, that's the father of my dad, is also tall. But the mother of my dad is not so tall. She is not tall. So you can see my dad and my mom inherited the gene or the characteristics of tallness from their parents. And we, the children, that's myself and my other siblings, we also inherited that gene from our parents. So these characteristics of tallness is shared between we, the children, and our parents. In your own family as well, if you look closely, you can identify some of these traits that have been shared between your parents and yourself. We can also say family traits are characteristics that are inherited from one family generation to another family generation. Take a look at this chart over here. We have great-grandparents, we have grandparents, then we can call these the parents, and this is the child. This child is the great-grandchild of the great-grandparent. And this child is also the grandchild of the grandparents. If you take a look at this chart, you will see that the great-grandparents have a common characteristic, their hair color. The color of their hair seems to be red. It is red. You can say this hair color is red. This great-grandparents gave birth to this lady with, sorry, gave birth to this young man who is called Bill with red color of hair. So Bill inherited the color of his hair from his parents. These are the parents of Bill. Bill gave birth to a daughter, or he gave birth to two daughters and one son. Take a look at these two children. Remember, Bill got married to a lady whose hair is blonde. Her hair is not dark. Her hair is not red. Rather, the color of her hair is a bit light. You can call that the blonde hair color. So you can see that Bill's first, first daughter, the hair of Bill's first daughter seemed to be blonde like his wife. So she inherited the color of her hair from her mom. How about his second daughter? Her hair color is red. So she inherited that color of hair from her dad, who is Bill. His son seemed to have the blonde hair color as well. So he took that characteristics from his mom. You can see that these three children here inherited the characteristics of their hair color from their parents. How about this grandchild? That is Bill's grandchild. The color of his hair is completely different. Remember that we can only see his mother, who is Bill's daughter. We haven't seen his father yet, so we can't tell what the color of his father's hair is. So maybe he inherited this blue color of hair from his father and not his mother. So you can see these traits came from the great-grandparents, it got to the grandparents, it got to his parents and then to himself. 
Some of these traits are passed on from generation to generation, from the time of our forefathers, our great-great-great-grandparents, it got to our great-grandparents, our grandparents, it got to our parents, and it ended up in us. We too will pass this trait to our children. So we say they are traits that are inherited from one family generation to another family generation. So in this case, this is one generation, generation of the great-grandparents, this is another generation, and another, and another. All of these are different family generations. These family traits include characteristics that are passed on from our forefathers, like I mentioned earlier, to the time of our great-grandparents, and down to us, the children, through our immediate parents. There are different examples of family traits. I'm sure you can identify some by now. You can take a look at yourself, Take a look at some of these characteristics you have and you can tell what family trait is present in your family. But let's take a look at some of the examples. We have the color of skin. You can tell if someone is dark in complexion, if someone is light in complexion, or if someone is very fair, white, and so on. For example, I can say I am dark in complexion. Or some people can say my skin or the complexion of my skin is brown. Some people can say brown or black. Other persons have different skin complexion. How about the color of your hair? What is the color of your hair? Is it dark, brown, light, blonde, red? What is the color of your hair? So at this time, I expect you to take the mirror and try to see the color of your hair. How about the color of your eyes? There are different colors of eyes that people inherit from their parents. We have the blue eye color, violet eye color, we have gray, green, hazel, and brown. I can't tell the color of my eyes, can you tell? Okay, let's continue. We also have different shapes of faces, so different people have different shape of face. Let's take a look at some of the shapes. So we have the round face shape, we have square, remember I said the round is also called the oval shape, we have oblong shape, we have the shape of face that we call the love shape, the love shape. If you take a look at this shape, it will give you the shape of love. We also have the diamond shape, and so on. So different people have different shape of face. We have the shape of the nose, the shape of the mouth, shape of the forehead as well. You can see the different shape of face. We have the thin shape of mouth, we have the thin lip, oval lip, thin upper lip, and so on. The shape of the nose, you can see we have the high nose bridge, low nose bridge, pointed nose, round nose or the hooked nose shape. We also have the height of the body. So we can say someone is tall or someone is short. We have those that are tall. As you can see in this family, we have the tall father and the short mother. We can see we have the tall father and the mom who is of average height. The brother here seems very tall, like his father. And we have the sister who is not so tall. How about this family? We have a tall father and a mother who is not so tall. So we can say she's of average height. They have three children. Out of the three, one is very tall like his dad and the other two are short. So you can tell if someone is tall or someone is short. We also have the size and shape of feet. So take a look at your feet. Are they large? What are the sizes? Do they look like those of your mom or those of your dad? We have body sizes as well. Some persons are fat, while some persons are thin. Some persons too are not thin, they are not so fat, they are just of normal body weight. So we have body weight as well. Some persons also have dimples on their cheek or dimples on their chin. We have people that have dimples on their cheek or those that have dimples on their cheek, chin. They inherit all of these traits from their parents. 
We have the hair type as well. Some persons have coily hair, while some have straight hair type. Some persons have the ability to roll their tongue. Can you roll your tongue? Some persons can coil their tongue into different shape. They can roll their tongue into different shape. For example, I can roll my tongue a bit, but not so much. Okay, let me try. I can't roll my tongue so much. I can, but not so much. Can you roll your tongue? Can you try to roll your tongue in this form or in this form? These are, or this is an ability that one inherits from the parents. We also have the trait or the characteristics or the trait of the shape of the ear lobe. Some persons have the free ear lobe. In this case, these are free ear lobe. We call them detached. Detached in the sense that it is not attached to the face. It's not completely attached to the face. This lower, this ear lobe is not attached to the face. We can see that it is detached from the face. This one is also detached from the face. Mine is also detached from my face. It is not attached to my face. But the other type, the, the attached ones, you can see it is completely attached to the face. It doesn't have this lower dangling part. So these ones are attached ear lobes. So why some persons have the free one, the detached ear lobes, some persons have the attached ones, like I have the free one. The shape of your hairline as well. Some persons have the complete hairline, why some persons have what we call willow's peak. Willow's peak is when your hairline comes to, comes to form an edge or an angle on your forehead. So that's willow's peak. We also have quantity of ha hair on your scalp, quantity of eyelash, quantity of eyebrow, and so on. So different family members inherit all of these characteristics or all of these traits. In some families, you realize that they have full hair or some family members have long hair, full eyebrow, and so on. How about attitude as well? Yes, some attitude are also inherited from parents, like I mentioned earlier. In some families, some children inherit attitudes such as bad temper, quick temper. They get angry easily. And if you check very well, you realize this kind of trait was inherited from either their mom or their dad or grandparents. We also have aggressiveness and handedness. So some persons are left-handed because they inherited it from their fathers or their parents, maybe their grandparents or from generations before them. Handedness, that's also something you can inherit. Ability to use your left hand or even both hands. So you can see someone who is very aggressive. Other than these traits, the ones we have mentioned, the physical traits and those traits we can see in the character of a person, some other kind of things can also be inherited from parents. So there are a number of diseases that children can inherit from their parents. Diseases and health conditions. These kind of health conditions pass from generation to generation in a family. So if the parents of a person have or had this kind of disease, it is very, very possible, likely, that the children in that family, the children of such a person, will also have these diseases. Some of these diseases include hypertension, sickle cell disease, color blindness, asthma, diabetes, and obesity. People or parents that once had these diseases, or people whose parents had these diseases, are likely to come down with these diseases sometime in their life. So it is important that people get to know their traits and they'll find a way to manage such diseases. Okay, haven't talked about examples of traits that are passed on from generation to generation. I want to ask a question. Does it mean that you can find children that look exactly like their parent, a child that looks exactly like his dad or his mom? Yeah, you find children that look like their parents physically. When we look at their faces, we can say this child looks so much like her mom, or she looks like her dad, or he looks like his mom, his auntie, his uncle, and so on. Although children share these resemblance, these striking resemblance with their parents, or people look so much like their parents, but no child is exactly like his or her parents. So I said I look like my dad. 
Yes, that's true. But it doesn't mean I look exactly like my dad. There should be some characteristics that makes me different from my dad. So a child might show certain traits which may not be seen in any of his parents. It is possible. It is possible for a child to have traits that are not seen in his parents. Now let's take a look at this our chart once more. We said these are the grandparents, right? They both have the red color of hair. They gave birth to Bill, whose hair color is also red. Bill gave birth to three children, and the three of them have two different hair colors. We have one with the red hair color from Bill, and the other two with blonde hair color from their mother. Now we saw the case of Bill's grandchild coming with blue hair. If we go back to his great grandparents, none of them had the blue hair. But we don't know if he inherited this blue hair color from his dad. Take a look at this other child. This is Bill's child. He also has the red hair color. He gave birth to two children. But take note, he married a lady who has dark hair color. She has black hair color. So his two children ended up having black hair color. None of them inherited the red color from B. They all took the dark or black hair color from their mom. So in this case, we can say this red hair color has skipped this particular generation. If these children give birth to their own children, you might find some of their children having the red hair color, which came from their father. You can't find any of his children with the red hair color because they all took their mother's hair color. So it is possible for some children to have traits that are not present in their father. If they give birth to children who end up becoming or having red color, you may be wondering, how come you have the red hair color and your father doesn't have a red hair color? Or how come you have red color and your mom or dad do not have the red hair color? That is because their grandfather had the red hair color. This is because some traits can skip some generations. So in this case, it skips this particular generation. It wasn't seen in the parents, but the parents went on to have a child who had red color. So it may appear in the next generation. So their next generation, which are their children, might come up with red hair color. So it means that one's parent may have these traits but this trait may not be seen in them. For them to give birth to children who end up displaying traits that are not seen in them, it means they had these traits hidden in their body. So these traits were hidden. That is why you can see some children looking slightly or a bit different from their parents. Their parents gave birth to them and their parents passed on those genes to them. But because these genes were not seen in their parents physically, they were hidden in their parents and they were revealed or exposed in the children. So we have hidden traits, traits that may be hidden in a person and traits that may be seen in a person. For example, as I'm standing before you, you can see the complexion of my skin. I am dark. You can also see that I am tall. It is possible that when I give birth to my own children, maybe one or two might end up becoming short or fair. It is possible I have a hidden trait that is not revealed in me. So those hidden traits that usually do not come up easily are called recessive traits. And those that are always displayed, whenever they are present in a person, they will always be displayed. They will be seen. You will have to see them. They cannot be hidden like this red hair color. In this case, this red hair color was hidden. The black hair color covered or overshadowed the red hair color. And the children that were born to this couple ended up with a dark hair color because the red hair color was completely hidden. So those ones that are always displayed are called the dominant traits. How did this trait end up in the bodies of these children? Do they just grow up and realize they have traits? Or they just see the face, the color of their skin, the shape of their face and all that? No, usually, we inherit genes or traits from our parents. How do we inherit this trait? Let me tell you. You remember the bodies of humans, or our bodies are made up of cells, isn't it? We have tiny cells which come together to form various parts of our bodies. These tiny cells form 
the muscles in our bodies, they form our faces, our eyes, our skin, the organs in our body, our liver, our kidney. They form every part of our body when they come together. So we are made up of several numbers of cells. Each cell in our body, or each cell in the human body, contains so many genes. They contain genes. So we have the cell in our body, which makes up the entire part of our bodies. And within these cells, you will find the gene. But hold on, the gene doesn't just exist. Let's take a look at how it works. You have the human body, say your own body. We have several cells in your body, which make up all the parts of your body. Within the cells, we have the nucleus, which is the inside of the cell. We have the inner part of the cell, which is the nucleus. Each of these nucleus have certain structures that are called chromosomes. Then in that chromosome, we have the DNA. And the DNA carries the gene. So we said the gene are the structure in the cell that carry information that determines the traits you see in a person. So if you see several traits in me, or if you see me display or show different traits, they are all contained or present in my gene. And where are my genes? My genes are in the cells of my body. Now let's continue. Genes are inherited from parents. So the genes in my body came from my parents. I inherited my genes from my parents. So oftentimes you hear people say, you took the gene of your mom or the gene of your dad or the DNA of your mom or dad. That's because you inherit all of these things from your parents. It is a gene that tells what traits have been passed on from a parent to an offspring. So the genes in my body are different from those in my dad because I inherited a different form or different types of gene. My brother inherited his own kind of gene, all from our parents. My sisters and every other sibling inherited their own kinds of gene from our parents. So that's why I may not look exactly like my siblings because we all took genes from our parents in different ways. Let's go back again on how these genes come from parents. Before you were born, your mom and your dad came together to make a baby. In the process of making a baby, your mom contributed one cell and your dad contributed one cell. These two cells came together to become one cell, one entity, which is a little baby that is developing. So these two cells came together, they became one unified cell, and this unified cell started splitting gradually, and within a period of time, this one cell became duplicated, or it divided itself into several copies of cells, and these several copies of cells started forming the different parts of the body. It formed the various tissues, the organs, the heart, the kidney, the stomach, the intestine, it formed the bones, and before you knew it, a complete human was formed through those cells that were contributed by the mom and the dad. So when the cells were being contributed, the genes in the cells were also contributed as well. So that was how we inherited these genes from our parents. While we were inheriting genes from our parents, we also inherited two copies of genes for each trait. Remember I said one cell from our mom and one from our dad. Each of these cells contains traits. They had one copy of genes each. Remember, we said, let's use G for genes. And these genes carry the information that will tell us the traits in a person. So we had one gene that carries information for traits from our mom. Okay, say our dad. Let's start with the dad. And this is from our mom. Say my mom in this case. We are saying that we inherit two copies of genes for each Traits. What are traits? Again, different characteristics such as the color of a person's eyes, color of skin, shape of face, color of hair, and so on, the height of a person. So for each of those traits, each of those characteristics, we inherit two genes. Because our mom will give us one, then our dad will also give us one. So in the case where you have a fair dad and a dark mother, the mom will give you what she has, and your dad will also give you what he has. And by the end of the day, you're getting two genes for the same trait. Okay, let's take a look at the color of a person's eyes. 
This is the father. The color of his eyes are brown. He has brown eye colors. And this is the mother. The color of her eyes are also brown. So they ended up having children. The first one has brown eyes because the mother gave her brown eye color and the father also gave his brown eye color. At the end of the day, this child has two genes for the same trait, that is eye color. He had one brown color from the father and another brown color from the mother. So at the end of the day, he has two genes for the color of eyes, one brown from the mom and one brown from the dad. So he ended up having brown eyes. So we inherit two genes, two copies of genes from our parents for each trait, one from our mother and the other from our father. Each of these copies of genes could be the same or they could be different. Okay, let's take a look at this case. Now, this is the gene. This is what the gene looks like in the cell. This is the gene. It's always, it's usually intertwined in this manner. You can see this is the gene as well in the DNA. So take a look at this gene. We have different traits that are present in the gene. This is the color of the hair of a person. We can see this is red and this is brown. So this one came from his dad and this came from his mom. We can also see for the height of the person's body, this is tall and this is short. So this came from his dad and this from his mom. So you always find two genes for the same trait, whatever the trait may be, whatever characteristics it might regard as a trait. So for example, one might inherit the gene of light skin color from his dad and that of dark skin color from his mother. This makes what? Two different genes for the same trait. What is the trait here? The color of the skin. And what are the different genes? We have that of light skin and that of dark skin. So this person has two genes, two copies of gene for one trait, color of skin. In this case, we say a person can also inherit the gene of dark skin color from his father and another of dark skin color from his mother. This person also has two copies of gene for the same trait, which is what's the traits? The color of the skin. But in this case, these two different copies of gene, these copies of genes are the same. They are all dark from the mother and dark from the father. Now, each of these copies of genes, each of these copy, the one that comes from the mom and the copy that comes from the dad, are called alleles. So we have one allele, two allele, one allele, two allele. For each trait, for the color of my skin, I have two alleles. These two alleles make up a gene. So a gene is always, or a gene always contains two alleles, one from my mom and one from my dad. That's why you can see in this case, we have the hair color, one allele, two allele and so on. Color of my eyes, one allele, two allele. Each of these alleles come together to make a gene. A gene for the color of my skin, a gene for the color of my eyes, a gene for the shape of my face, a gene for the height of my body, a gene for every characteristic or so every trait you can see in my body. A gene always has two alleles. In some cases, we say some alleles are more active while some are less active. But before we go over there, let me tell you this. Genes are usually represented with letters. When we learn about genes, we use letters to represent them. So let's take a look at the gene for the color of the eyes. You can see this person has brown eyes. This is the father. And the gene for the color of his eyes says capital letter B and small letter B. The mom here also has brown eyes. And the gene for the color of her eyes also says capital letter B and small letter B. Remember I said for each trait, you have two genes. So the father has two genes, one and two for the color of his eyes. The mother also has two genes, one and two for the color of her eyes. And I said these different copies of genes are called what? Alleles. So we have one allele, two alleles for the gene of eye color. Then for the mother, we also have one allele, two allele for the gene of her eye color as well. Now you may be wondering what these letters mean. Capital letter B and small letter B. Why we also have capital letter B for the mom and small letter B. 
all of these are called alleles, or we can say they are copies of genes. This capital letter B here represents the first copy of genes for the father's eye color, which is brown. It says brown. Capital letter B here says brown. Let's write it here. Let's write it at this point. Say capital letter B is for brown eye color. But the small letter B that is shown here says it is not brown, it is blue. So small letter B means blue eye color. But if you look at this father, the father has brown eye colors. Even though his other copy of gene says he also has blue color. Remember what we said when we mentioned that some genes may be hidden in a person while some are displayed. So in this case, the blue eye colors were hidden in the father. That's why his eyes appear to be brown. His eyes are brown. Because this blue was hidden Why this brown was revealed. So he has two copies of gene for eye color, as we said earlier. One is brown and the other is blue. But his eyes came out brown because the blue eye color was hidden behind the brown eye color. Some alleles, what are alleles? I'm sure you can answer that by now. Some alleles are more active than others. When they are present in a person, they are more active. They are always active. They will not allow the other allele to be revealed or to be shown or to be seen in that person. They will always be too active and they will take up the front position and they will be displayed in that person. Just in the case, like the case of this brown eye color. Even though there was the allele for blue eye color, this brown eye color overshadowed the blue eye color and that was what was displayed in the father. When we look at the father's eye color, we say they are brown because the brown allele was more active. Those kind of active alleles will always be displayed whenever they are present. Whenever the brown eye color is present in a person, it will be displayed. No matter what other color is pairing with it, that brown eye color will always be displayed. So they will always be displayed whether the less active eye alleles are present or not. These less active alleles will always be hidden whenever they are together with the active alleles. There are different types of eye colors. We have the green eye color, we have the gray eye color, and so on. You have blue, gray, and so on. But whenever any of these other eye colors are paired with brown eye colors to make a gene, remember you said a gene has two pairs. Whenever they are paired with brown to make a gene, the brown eye color will always be displayed in the person because these brown eye colors, we say they are part of those active genes. These active genes are called the dominant gene. They are the genes that are always displayed. They are not hidden. You will always see them whenever they are present. Active or dominant gene are alleles that will always be displayed whenever they are present in a person. So we have different examples of active alleles or different examples of dominant alleles in people. For example, we can say the dark hair color is an active allele or is a dominant allele in most persons. We also have the detached ear lobe. That is also an active allele in most persons. The oval face shape, brown eyes, all of these alleles are active. Whenever they are present in a person, maybe your mother contributed it into your gene or your father contributed it, it will always be displayed no matter what other allele is present. So we can see other examples of active or dominant alleles, dimples, dimples are always dominant, freckles, brown eyes, black or brown hair, all of these are traits that are always dominant, they will always be displayed. The less active alleles are called recessive alleles. These ones will always hide whenever they are paired with an active allele. Say for example, gray eye color. If your dad contributed the gray eye color to your gene and your mom contributed brown eye color to your gene, you will end up having brown eye colors because the brown eye color will always overshadow the other type of eye colors because it is active. So these less active ones that will always hide whenever they are paired with the active ones are called recessive alleles or recessive gene. They usually hide or they are usually hidden when they are combined with an active allele or an active gene. 
So recessive allele can only be seen in a person when it is paired with another recessive allele. So you must have seen people that have gray eye color or people that have blue eye color or people whose eye colors are green or hazel or whatever color it may be. How did these people end up with such eye colors that are less active or that are recessive? It is because their mother contributed the gene for gray eye color. Their father also contributed the gene for gray eye color. So whenever a recessive trait or a recessive allele pairs with another recessive allele, the person or an individual will end up displaying that recessive allele. So if, for example, the color of my eyes are emerald, or say the color of my eyes are blue, it is because for my own eye color, my mother gave me, or I inherited the blue eye color from my mom and the blue from my dad, which are both recessive. So when you put two recessive alleles together to make the gene for eye color, the person will end up having that recessive trait. If my mom contributes her brown eye color, or say her blue eye color, and my dad contributes his brown eye color, what will my eye colors be? They will be brown because the brown eye color is always active and it is a dominant gene. Examples of recessive traits or recessive alleles in humans are bright hair color, square face, no dimples, and attached ear lobe. So all of those people that have attached ear lobe, they are displaying the recessive trait. They inherited this trait from their both parents. Those people with square face, inherited square face from their mom and square face from their dad. So if you find any person or a person with any of the dominant traits, it means that this person has a dominant allele. If I have brown eyes, what does it mean? I have dominant allele, which is the brown eyes. Someone who has any of the dominant allele or dominant trait may or may not have a hidden recessive allele. Like the case of the man with the brown, the father with the brown eye color. Remember we said his gene has capital letter B and small letter B. And we say small letter B means blue eye color and capital letter B means brown eye color. In this case, he has the dominant trait, which is brown eye color. But we said he also has the hidden recessive allele which is blue. Blue is the hidden recessive allele. Whenever it is paired with a dominant allele, it will be hidden. Now, if this man has a child, just like we saw as it is in this case, he can pass that recessive allele to his child. And at the end of the day, that child, if he also gets a recessive allele from his mother, he will end up having or displaying a recessive trait. Like in this case, the father contributed his dominance to the first child, the mother also contributed her dominance to the first child. So she, he gave brown, she gave brown. This child ended up with brown eyes. His gene has capital letter B and capital letter B. Brown, brown from both parents. This second child now has capital letter B and small letter B. Meaning the father contributed his dominance, which is a capital letter B, brown eyes. While the mother contributed her small letter, which is a recessive blue eyes. So that was why he ended up having capital letter B and small letter B. It is possible for him to also contribute his blue eyes to his children. In this case, we have the same situation, capital letter B and small letter B. But in this case, we have small letter B and small letter B. So this person took the recessive trait from his dad and another recessive trait from his mom. So he ended up having blue eyes because he has two recessive. So whenever you have two recessive pairing together, the person will display that recessive trait, which is the blue eyes in this case. So this is how people inherit different genes from their parents. That is why you can see different siblings or siblings of a family having different kinds of traits. For example, in that case, you have three of the children having brown eyes and the last one having blue eyes because he inherited his own gene for the color of eyes in a different order. He took a recessive allele from his mom and a recessive allele from his dad. So you can see that these genes are passed on from parents to children or from generation to generation in a family. At this point, we'll summarize all we've been learning in today's class. We started by saying family traits are those characteristics that are shared between the parents and children of a family. 
We saw dominant and recessive traits. We say dominant traits are those traits that will always be displayed whenever they are present in the person. For example, the case of the brown eye color or the case of the attached ear or detached ear lobe, like my own ear lobe that is always dominant when it is present in a person. We said recessive traits are those traits that are usually hidden when they are combined or when they are paired with a dominant trait. And lastly, we say genes carry the information that determines the traits of a person. So can you take a good look at yourself once more? What are those genes you inherited from your mom? And what are those genes you inherited from your dad? Okay, let me rephrase it. What traits did you inherit from your mom and from your dad? Do you have any dominant trait? Are the colors of your eyes brown? Do you have an attached or a free ear lobe? Do you have dark hair color and so on? I'm sure you should be able to identify some of these dominant traits in your family already. You should know those you got from your mom and those you got from your dad. Before we end today's class, I'd like us to try or take this question. Which of the following is true about family traits? A, they are passed on from one friend to another. B, family traits are inherited from siblings. C, family traits are passed on from one family generation to another. The correct answer here is option C. Family traits are inherited from parents and they are passed on from one family generation to another. The second question, which one of the following is not a family trait? We mentioned different types of family traits, so can you identify the one that is not an example of a family trait? A, we have the ability to roll the tongue. B, possession of two hands. And C, color blindness. The correct answer here is option B. Every human on earth, of course, have two hands. So these are not special traits. These are not traits that are shared between family. Every human has two hands. So ability to roll the tongue and color blindness are shared between parents and the children of a family. We have come to the end of today's class. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand how these genes are passed on from parents to children. I hope you can talk about recessive and dominant genes. I also hope to see you in our next class where we shall continue to talk about family traits. Until then, bye.